Well, the market is definitely changing in Orange County. I got good news for the buyers and sellers you better pay attention to. This is Dean Odell with Seven Gables Real Estate and the Odell Group. And today is August 22nd, and we are going to look at the first chart now. Let's take a look at the inventory. Remember now, this is 2024, so we're looking at that purple line, and we can see today that we have 3,490 homes. That's up a little bit from two weeks ago and up a lot from last year. But if we look at that three-year average, you can see we're still well below the normal levels, but the good news is, is that purple line is going up. You can see the angle of that, and you can see how that was comparing to all the previous years. All the previous years on this chart, it was leveling off. So we'll have to see what the next two weeks bring, but right now, that purple line and our inventory is climbing. Okay, and today we have a special chart. This is for homes sitting on the market, and this explains why our inventory is starting to climb, okay? So this breaks it down by price range. You can see how many active listings are in each price range. You can see how many have been sitting 30 days on the market and over, and what percentage that is. So when you look at the percentages, it's pretty interesting because you can see that the highest percentage of houses that are sitting on the market, surprisingly enough, zero to 750,000, 51% of those. Now you would think that, hey, why are those houses sitting on the market? Those are the more most affordable ones. Well, I'll tell you why, because these are the buyers that are most affected by interest rates. These are the buyers that have to come up with their first down payments a lot of the times. So we're starting to see that price range weaken, okay? Now we look at the other price ranges, the 750 price range and to a million, you could see the percentage. You can see how it goes all the way down to the two to $4 million range where you can start to see it really climb. 61% of those homes are sitting on the market over 30 days over 4 million, 76%. Cumulatively in all of Orange County, 54% of the homes are 30 days on the market. Now you slide over to the right there and you go, okay, well, let's look at how about 60 days. How many of these homes are sitting on the market 60 days? You go ahead, you can go right down the line, you do that same exercise, look at the percentages over 60 days. You've got 26% of the homes, which remember it was 51% for 30 days, it's 26% for over 60 that are still sitting on the market in that zero to 750 range. And you can see that it's interesting to see the 30 day percentage versus the 60 day percentage, right? Anyway, when you get all the way down to the very bottom there, you'll see that 29% of the homes are sitting on the market now for more than 60 days. And the average marketing time is 66 days in the county for all price ranges. That's kind of an interesting chart. You might want to freeze that and really study it, but it does tell a story. It does tell why our inventory is climbing. Houses are sitting on the market longer. We're returning back more to a normal market. Not everything's selling in a week or two. And we have a lot of houses that are overpricing coming on the market. So let's go to our next slide and see how demand is doing. So now we can see that the number is 1,594 homes that have gone into escrow in the last 30 days. And you compare that with two weeks ago at 1530, that's 64 more homes for the 94 more homes that we had in inventory, right? So that's almost two out of every three were absorbed. Now that doesn't necessarily mean it was the exact houses that came up, but the absorption rate you could see was two homes for every three that came on the market. Now we look at last year, last year, 1,576 homes. So we're just a little bit above that. And for our three-year average, we're still almost a thousand homes lower than what we had before. And if you look at that purple line, you could see we got that bump in demand. A lot of that, I believe, was what happened in the last 30 days, which is interest rates started falling and they fell quite a bit and then they popped back up a little bit. So this two weeks to me seems to indicate what happened when interest rates fell. So it just goes to show you demand's going to pick up if and when interest rates fall. So now we're looking at expected marketing time. Nothing real exciting there. Basically the same as two weeks ago. And you could definitely see that we are slower than last year. 66 days today versus 46 days last year. And that's almost a 50% increase, right? In terms of time to get your house sold. And you could see the three-year average is 79 days. So we're getting closer and closer to that average. 
Let's take a look at the next chart where we look at that expected marketing time by price range. So we can see that hot sellers market still exists under a million five, right? We're still seeing those houses sell on average in less than 60 days. But what's interesting is look at the marketing time this year versus last year. You can see how it's increased in every price range. Continuing down to the slight sellers market at a million five to two million, you can see those numbers in a balanced market between two and four million, and then a deep buyer's market, anything over four million, and just hope you're not selling a house over six million because look at that marketing time, 527 days. What is that, almost a year and a half on average to get a house sold in that price range? Doesn't mean it's gonna take you a year and a half. What it means is you better be paying attention to pricing. How are you hitting the market? Are you going to sit or are you gonna attract those buyers that have been waiting for a new house to come up in that price range? Because if we went back to that sitting on the market chart, you would see over $4 million, there's 536 current active listings out of approximately the 3,490 homes that we have on the market. So that's a pretty good percentage, right? Almost one out of every six, seven homes is over $4 million. It's crazy. So there's a lot of high priced homes on the market right now. More than a third of the inventory that's on the market is over $2 million. So that's what's slowing down the market as well. Only so many buyers in that price range. Okay, now looking at the Tustin data chart for July of this year as compared to July of last year, we've got the three zip codes broken down. And I'm going to point out some of the bigger increases or decreases we've seen. If you look at what is for sale in 92705, you can see the inventory has doubled. It's up 100%. You look at 92782, it has more than doubled. It's one and a half times, right? So you're really seeing inventory increases. And the good news is, is in both of those zip codes, they also saw more new listings coming to the market, which is giving buyers more opportunities. And that's what we really need to get this market healthy. If you look at the solds in those two zip codes, you can see that the solds are up based on there also being more inventory. I'm sure interest rates dropping has something to do with that as well. But look at the pendings. They're up in both of those zip codes and not to ignore the 92780 zip code but you can just see that there hasn't been much of an inventory change. A lot of the numbers seem to be the same except for the new listings. Now all of a sudden the new listings are up from 15 to 30. So that should show up in the data down the line. So let's see how that plays out in the next month. And then we look at the months of inventory here. We can see that we are up in two of the three zip codes, but all of the zip codes are relatively low inventory. Anything under four months is certainly a seller's market. So even though we're seeing inventory increase, you know, when you look at that relative to sales and everything else, the inventory is still historically low. If we look at the active price ranges, you know, they're all up across all three zip codes especially the 92782. There's been a lot of high-end sales or listings that have come on the market there, but also sales. You can see that that's up in 92782 as well for the average sold price. So looking at this final list price and original list price categories, you can see things are cooling off a little bit. Not as much overbidding going on. Still may be happening in the 92780, which is the lower priced zip code. So there's more buyers. It's relative to happen in that price point than any other price point right now for today's market. And then finally, we move to that average days on the market. And you can see that the higher priced zip codes of 92705 and 92782, that time to sell the home is definitely going up a little bit, but still not bad. I mean, you know, 27 and 13 days, that's not a whole lot, right? And if we look at that 92780, we are even Steven from last year, 17 days. So anyway, now it's time to talk a little bit about the market and my advice for buyers and sellers. Okay, my advice for buyers and sellers this week is to get yourself familiar with the new National Association of Realtors Settlement that just started August 17th. We have a complete video, two videos actually, that are on this channel that you can watch. And if you have any further questions, please call us. We'll be keeping you updated on this, but it's very interesting. 
uh, to see how this is going to affect the market. We don't think it's going to really change much, quite honestly, because in the end, sellers are always going to be looking at their net number and buyers are always going to be looking at what's their total cost. So, you know, how things get arranged might change, but it's still going to be the same thing. And as I say in the other videos, the settlement and the way that residential is changing is basically exactly what commercial real estate has been forever. You know, so there's really nothing mon monumental going on here. It's, it's just returning to a, a different type of structure, you know, for residential. And I shouldn't even say returning because it's not returning. It's moving towards that. So anyway, so let's make sure you watch that video. I don't want to tie you up on this one spending too much time. Take a look at that video. Please comment. Please share it. Please subscribe to this channel and we will see you in two weeks on the next Tustin Talks. Thanks. Bye-bye.